Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to the Sunless Skies, where unfortunately due to, well, hmm, unfortunately due to RNG, our plans have gone slightly astray. The original plan was for us to finish our business with a lamentation, but unfortunately I used up all my cryptic benefactors and we can no longer get a testament feather as far as I know. Admittedly, there's probably another way to do this. In fact, there almost certainly is, because I know we can get the Testament of Salt other places than the Forge of Souls, yes? Am I crazy for thinking that? Hum. But, at the moment, it doesn't matter. For the moment, unimportant. Right now... Hmm... No, it still needs a Testament of Feather. Is there another way for me to get that, though? Not that I know of, not right now. Okay. Anyway, doesn't matter. Right now, we are just here to become Ephemera. I forgot my Navarantine Gemstones, because I am a fool. Huh. <sighs> okay. But yes, that is sort of the plan. <laughs> I forgot to change my, uh... Yeah, my cargo. That would have been the smart thing to do. Oh well. Just means we have to spend another two minutes just planning and plotting and thinking. And being frustrated. Mildly annoyed, really. Not really frustrated, just... <sighs> the fact that it's a RNG chance to convert one item to another and then... Ah, uh, just... It... It's irritating. There are layers to this grind that I am not a fan of. And that I feel like I wouldn't have experienced this if I was playing Sunless Sea. But, having said that, I mean, I don't think that's entirely fair. Maybe it's fair, but... I don't think it's entirely correct. I think most of that's just nostalgia. Very loud and obnoxious nostalgia. There we are. Alright, actually, what's my sovereign situation? Down to 300. Okay, that's pretty bad. Pretty dang bad, I would say. Huh. I don't think the prices at the different major ports varies. Though I could be wrong about that. Hmm. I had a thought. I haven't looked at the bazaar when I was going to those other ports. There could have been opportunities there. Oh my, I am a fool. I am possibly a fool. Bring me here. Hold that thought. There's no bazaar here, that's fine, whatever. The Court of Oaks. Make me, technically, dead. You've been yoked long enough. The Court of Oaks might rule you to be free. First, there's the wait to reach the attendant's window. Then, when at last you do, it is in no hurry to collect your information. From courtesy, it asks you first about your birth and family, and then about your travels, and next about your state of health. Several hours pass before it even opens an inquiry about your status. So you talk and talk until your breath is exhausted. But it is enough, in the end, you are marked ephemera rather than yoked. And now you may move about as the ephemera do which admittedly cost me my Testament of Salt, which is really annoying, but it's fun. Even this is okay. Because I believe being ephemera counts as effectively being dead-ish. And eh, while I'm here, let's go to the Stoneface Court first. I'm actually kind of curious if I have access to all of the facilities... Could you not, though? Is not an option. Okay, could you just get stuck there for me? Thank you. I appreciate that so much you don't even know. Sigh of disappointment. Uh, I hate this. I hate this so much. Oh, dearie, dear me. But it's fine. We just have to run from everything... 
out here because we are small and vulnerable. And poorly... Oh. Epistles vanished from the armory. Knives are disappearing. The signs of insurrection. Perhaps time for this. But find the parties responsible and dispose of them. Under interrogation, a shallow, a sallow stoker reveals where the pistol is hidden and who stole it. You seize the culprit and conduct a swift trial. Meaner spits at you as condemn her to the skies. Eh, perhaps it would have been better to sort of reset our terror there. But nightmares are so difficult to get rid of. Hmm. Ah, well. Oh. Is this beautiful? Is this... I mean, it is beautiful, but is it beautiful enough? Oh. For instance, things are clear that should have been hidden. Ah. Well, this is all terrible. Hmm. Ah, oh, good. I was hoping. I was thinking what this trip is missing is an attack by the sun. Admittedly, I should have known that that was not the best of decisions to make, but... Still, it was... It was there. It was an option. Oh, dearie dear me. Yes, yes, I know, I know. You're very terrifying and very unpleasant, and I just don't want to deal with you. Let me in, and hopefully there'll be a way to relieve my terror here. At least a little bit. Just a little tiny, 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 tiny bit, please. Seek entry to the stone-faced court. Uh, litigator, if you would, please. I wonder if another one would... Hmm. Oh, wait, what? Um. Oh, yes, I suppose because I am ephemera. As you step inside the court, you are met not by one of the skull-headed graven, but by a spirit in a porcelain mask. A voice issues from the jar slung across its back. It introduces itself as the exacting ombudsman. Ombudsman? Yes. When I heard the court was to be graced by ephemera, I put myself forward as your guide. Follow the exacting ombudsman. Before I take you to the trials, I have a favor to ask. Oh? This seems a sufficiently obscure location. You follow, well, you follow the ombudsman until your feet hurt, and then he says that. He says, finally, I'm investigating the graven who run this court. To put matters simply, I doubt their integrity. They claim their judgments are passed down by the watcher who speaks inside their heads. The ombudsman voice ombudsman. I'm gonna keep keep getting tripped on the, on this word. I can't talk right. Okay, this is a problem. But we move on. The ombudsman's voice brims with outrage. But I believe the graven are deciding judgments themselves far beyond their remit. Why is he chosen you now? How does he expect you to help? The ombudsman almost melts with relief. These are unusual circumstances, mutters the ombudsman. There is a need for... it shudders. Subterfuge. Henceforth, I will meet you in Erd, away from the prying eyes and ears of the Graven. He pauses. Metaphorical eyes. Theoretical ears. For now, investigate the jeweled judge, discover whether she's lying about the Watcher, and preferably hear it from her own lips. Hypothetical lips. He steps back, brushing dust from his robe self-consciously. If this investigation goes well, I hope to be appointed a servitor of the Blue Kingdom. Rest assured, from that position, I can reward you most handsomely. Oh. The ombudsman has asked to meet you in a secret... In secret. At a coffee house in Erd. Aw. That's cute. I like coffee houses. It'll be a date. It'll be delightful. Uh, now. Let's see here. Ooh. Oh, dear. A testament of roses, though. That does sound rather useful. Write a port report, though. Hmm. Adorable. Watch the trials simply because I believe we've already done this several times before. 
Much as the failed dead is dragged away, there's nothing to be done. Tale of Terror doesn't really help us. Um, hmm. I think I don't really have a choice in the matter. Meet the exacting ombudsman. He gave you directions to a coffee house. The problem is I'm already dead. The ombudsman asks you to meet him at a coffee house in Erd, where mass spirits silently contemplate empty cups and remember what coffee was like. Approach the table. He's twitchy, he's abrupt, he's rude to the waitress. He cleared up. Clearly doesn't enjoy all this skullduggery. Lucoria Maccabeorum. I interrogated the jeweled judge for hours, and all I got out of her was a selection of inoffensive anecdotes. The ombudsman shakes his head solemnly. I think I got that right. She's a tough nut to crack, that's for sure, but I have a plan. Every few months, the graven go to a grand ball called the Coria Maccabeorum. Oh, for the love of... Maccabeorum. It's rare for outsiders to attend, and they know about my investigations, there's no way I'll be invited. But if there's any way the judge will let her guard down and speak freely, it's there. Report back as soon as you've discovered a clue. Ask him how I can obtain an invitation, then. If the Coria Maccabeum is usually off-limits to all except the Graven, then how? But the Ombudsman has an idea. He leans in conspiratorially. I happen to know that the Carius official has received an invitation to the Maccabeorum, but he doesn't plan to attend, says the Ombudsman. I expect he'll be happy to give it to you in order to get him to meet you, though your status must be invisible or antecease, so I suppose that's impossible, he sighs. In which case, you'll need to flatter the judge with a gift of gemstones and hope she sees fit to invite you. Uh, okay, see, here's the thing. I have other problems, my dude. I'm currently dying. Uh Hmm. I could get my SAS changed, but unfortunately... Other problems right now. Hmm. Oh, if I had souls... Damn it! If I'd kept those souls originally, I probably could have made it out of here. And gotten... Ah, uh, Bother. Bother, bother, bother. Alright. Return to the city outside. There's a bazaar here, but it's just offering... <gasps> okay. Okay. So, this is not the best tactics I've ever used, but, however, go back in there. Go to Erd. Enter the court. Let's reduce my terror by as much as you are willing to do. Yeah, but by how much? Five. Okay. This is not going to be great, but it's going to be good enough. If it keeps me alive, that is all I ask. That was the last of it? Okay, good. Well, not good, but good enough. Okay. Well, we now have another job here. Unfortunately, not something that I'm going to be able to do anytime soon. But let's go do the job that we originally came to the Blue Kingdom to do. We just find that industrials, industrialists lost love, I believe. Don't recall the exact relations there, but you know what? At this point, I don't especially care as long as I get paid. Why are you this close? Do you mind? Would you stop following me? Thank you. Really now. Really now. Uh, this will cost fuel, but your terror will not increase. Uh, hmm. Uh, hmm. At this stage, I think we have to smash it. It does mean our nightmares are at max, which is unfortunate. But let me get rid of one of my otherworldly artifacts over here as well. Oh good, some souls. Oh good, something that wants to kill me. Well... <sighs> I 
I know I had other options there, and I'm wondering if I should have taken them, but choice made. No sense regretting it now. Too late to regret. You sell fuel, right? Beautiful. Although I don't have much money, I think I think I can afford maybe a single barrel of fuel. Ah, dearie, dear me. All right. Well, I hesitate to say that this job has been very successful. This trip has been very successful. Uh, I suppose this job has been quite successful at this point then. Because we're about to, in theory, find who the industrialist wants us to find. And that was what originally brought us here. Besides, of course, my own curiosity. Hmm. The shadow of the sun, you say? I want to look around it. This is the court of the sun's daughter, whose radiance is a glory of the heavens. Curious. What's that sound? Oh. I washes over you. You are in the heart of a star's power. I mean, I kind of want to. To see, you know, what's past that. But we have some distractions before we can make that trip. And I feel like I will want to be very, very well supplied before I do that. Hmm. Because there's a spot. There's room. I could go through that gap there, I think. And what would that do? To the endless furrows, please. Now, give me a goddamn shovel. After all these trips I've had to make. <sighs> Many of the shades are digging with their hands bolstered by the grim patience of the dead. You don't have that kind of time. You drop into one of the trenches that crisscross the churned landscape and walk until you find a yoked spirit with a bundle of shovels slung across her back. The yoked spirit clutches her shovels jealously. She lacks a voice shard, so instead she crouches and scrawls in the mud. These guide the dead to their door. They are reserved for those who need them most. The frailest spirits, the struggling. I'm a extremely waifish wraith. Um, hmm. Tempting, but no. I have a litigator for this. Your appointed guardian steps smoothly forward and takes over. Thank you. In no time at all, the nameless spirit has persuaded the recalcitrant shade that you are the frailest and most meager of spirits. You are handed a shovel and she even writes, good luck, in the mud. Your litigator informs you, however, that they will wait for you back at the engine. They have no desire to get any closer to death's door than they already are. You've acquired a shovel. Once the vast grounds around death's door were called the seven concentric gardens, there were flowers, grasses, Trees, leaves still attached. Now there is mud. A squalid black hungering mud, and a seething sea of the masked dead digging and scrambling, churning, overturning, searching. Useless now to try to cultivate even a blade of grass, but a few yoked gardener spirits dash between the trenches, rakes and hose aloft. They're still stubbornly attempting the impossible. Dig for your door. Occasional flashes of thunderless lightning illuminate the blighted land. Shades burrow in the mud like eager worms. You should join them. Well, I shouldn't. Excuse me? Committal. The mud is a miserable ocean, vast, uninterrupted. You hold your shovel like a dowsing rod and somehow know exactly where to go. Your blade bites earth again, again, again. Your hands bleed. Your arms ache. Eventually resemble some kind of splattered mud wraith. Finally, your shovel slams against something solid. The blade breaks. On your knees, you scrabble and uncover a stone door with your name inscribed upon it. Your very own door to death, ancient and brutal and familiar. It's been here, waiting for you, since the beginning of all things. You heave it open and drop into darkness. Oh. 
I have options, but first. Below the mud, you find yourself in the Catafalque, a candle-decked labyrinth filled with endless lines of shuffling silent dead. Death's door waits at the other end of the tunnels. Unless the candles are burned to stubs, leaving the floor caked with runnels of wax. Lugoy, the living words of the sun, patrol the tunnels. Their elegant sigil forms roar with fire. They and a few stubborn candles are the only light left. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I have plenty of otherworldly artifacts, so that might be something I want to do later. But first, search for the industrialist's lost love. She must be somewhere down here. Surely she can't have moved too far. You call her name and interrogate passing spirits to no avail. She must be even deeper in the catafalque. Oh dear. Press deeper into the catafalque. The tunnels open up ahead and the ring of Lagoy circle the ceiling. You will need to pass a test in order to progress. Naturally. I hate this idea, but okay. Here the tunnels open up into a great hall. A horrible great hall, apparently, given what's going to happen here. The gangling sequestrator sits on her raised throne, surrounded by hanging lanterns and censers. As the spirits pass beneath her at a steady shuffle, she extends one telescopic arm and settles a veiny hand across their porcelain mask. Within a moment of wrenching effort, she yanks it away, leaving the spirit faithless. It turns and heads deeper into the catafalque. This is the first test. Only those who surrender their visage can pass. You will lose your face, and with it, five hearts. Perhaps you'll be able to get it back at a later date. Ah, good. Well, I'm glad I succeeded at that. <laughs> oh, the hand encloses your face. A twist, a wrench, and it retreats with something ragged clutched between its fingers. It hardly hurts at all. If anything, it feels as though a weight has been lifted. Your new reality becomes apparent only when you touch your face and feel nothing but an expanse of brute, blank flesh. Your vision dims as though a grey veil has closed over the world. With some effort, you're able to manifest a lipless slit of a mouth, which screams. You've passed the test of substance, and your face is gone! You may move further into the catafalque. Well, joyous day! Oh, well that's horrifying. Anyway, now that I have no face, here the tunnel opens up into a great hall, etc, etc. Press deeper into the catafalque. You've passed the test of substance and surrendered your face to the sequestrator. Your face can be reclaimed from the quartermaster in the endless furrows. Great! Hmm. Now that's an interesting one. But, search for the industrialist's lost love regardless. It will be more difficult to find her now that the spirit's masks have been taken. I hate this. You call her name and interrogate passing spirits to no avail. She must be at death's door already, either that or she's passed on. Oh, would you... Oh, oh, mm, mm. Well... Given the choices, perhaps if you duck down amid the greatest throng of spirits, you can pass them by unnoticed. Give it a shot. Okay, we succeeded. Unnoticed, you slip quickly through the swollen crowd, head bowed. The spirits on either side of you are struck by bolts of fire for a moment the shades pause, then continue on their way with a renewed purpose, but you escape the Lugoy's attentions. I mean, I guess I could try to do that, but like... Help a bereaved spirit find her lost companion real quick. They stuck together through death, the court, even the mud, but they lost each other in the test of substance. Uh. 57% chance, sure. With her mask removed, the bereaved spirit's face refuses to stick in your memory. When you look away from her, all you are left with is a vague impression of her heartfelt sadness. His face was taken, she scratches on the wall. I lost him in the crowd, please. His name is Bobby. He must be somewhere along the rushing, faceless crowd. Oh, a shame that my mirrors failed at that. 
Now look, you stumble through the tunnels of the Cataphile, calling Bobby's name, a torrent of spirits rush past, and then sparing you a second glance. Give up for now. Shame. But deeper still into the catafalque. Oh. Hmm. Well, this'll be interesting. Uh, once again, the tunnel opens up and becomes a staircase descending into a cauldron huge as a lake. It brims with a whirling black fluid. Dozens of the yokes stand, stirring at the edges. An endless procession of shades march in without hesitation, and are whipped away by the current. On a balcony above the cauldron, a vast frog-like spirit carefully oversees the entire affair. What are you waiting for? It croaks when you pause. Ask the amphibian alchemist what awaits you in the cauldron. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, we'll learn about that in a moment. But yes, what awaits me in the cauldron? You'll enter the cauldron and mix with the other spirits, croaks the alchemist. You'll taste each other's memories, know each other's innermost selves. If you are strong enough, you will emerge on the other side, stripped of irrelevancies. Your name, for instance. If you are not strong enough, you will remain in the cauldron, and other spirits will absorb what they need from you. You will still reach death's door. They will take you with them, piece by piece. Ho. Oh. Okay. Well, the thing is, I have a moment of inspiration I could use for this, but... Fifty-five percent chance of success. I hate this idea. Hmm. Hmm. But I could also just use this moment of inspiration to do this. But this is a chance to get it done for free. But the guaranteed. The guaranteed option. A beacon blazes in your mind. Its light will fill you, keep you whole. As you step beneath the surface, foreign memories flood you. Fleeing through long grass, of the crunch of bones between your jaws, swirling unfamiliar skies, you are coming apart. Spirits swirl around you, silent shapes with arms outstretched, you are buffeted by memories. Sword fights in a forest, sunken libraries, a city of flame, you cling to your name, but there are a dozen other names you can call to mind, and you no longer know which one is yours. You fight the swirling currents and emerge on the other side, mostly intact. Your name is gone. The other gaps in your memory are not too severe, you think. Ooh. Hmm. Whistling the winds rip through the catafalque as you approach the end of all things. The walls fall away. The high wilderness opens before you. A narrow bridge extends into the void. At the end of the bridge, a seething mass of spirits cluster at the foot of a door as tall as the sky. Death's door. Its every inch burns with symbols and is distinguishable from the hundreds of Lagoy hovering wrathfully above. Search for the industrialist lost love. One must... She must be here. One more time. She must be here. Because I can't go much further. You dash between the spirits who are pushing towards the door, calling her name. But of course that doesn't work. These shades have been processed through the catafalque. They're faceless, nameless, the memories of their old lives in tatters. So you don't call her name. You call the name of the industrialist instead. Do any of them remember him? One spirit turns to meet your gaze. She clutches your coat, and her shoulders shake silently. Hmm. The lost love resists your attempts to lead her away from death's door. You hand her a stick of chalk, and she scrawls on the walls of the catafalque. I love him still, she writes, but I am ready to move on. She pulls a small clay jar from her robes and thrusts it into your hands. It holds my voice, she writes. Give it to him. A memento. Oh, why would you make me make these decisions? Okay. I think there's beauty in accepting death, but here's the thing. Always choose life. Because I don't know what happens in this particular setting, what happens after death, but uh, 
Better to hedge your bets and keep living forever. Come on. Convince her to return to the world of the living. Try to. It won't be difficult. She has a little willpower left after the Catafalque's trials. A few more mentions of the industrialists and her resolve will crumble. She glances back at Death's door and hesitates. It begins to open. The first light blazes forth. She writes a single word on the wall. Yes. You grab her and pull her away from the door in its enticing and snaring light. You wait, clutching each other until it slams shut once again. Can the dead leave the Blue Kingdom intact? It's not a question you've had to con cause to consider before. Perhaps you should search for an answer before you drag the lost love beyond the kingdom's borders. Take the lost love back to the world of the living and reunite her with the industrialist. Make sure you're prepared. But also, witness the opening of the door. The door fascinates and appalls. It's the ultimate promise, the ultimate threat. How many of the living have ever seen beyond? Have any? Ooh, yes. You wait, the winds gnaw, still you wait. Majestic and ponderous, death's door opens. It opens not like a door, but like a dam. A seething cascade of spirits are deposited into the beyond. Beyond it is punishingly bright. You see ornamented skies draped in turquoise and furious gold. To gaze upon it is a painful privilege, but not one that can be endured for long. You find yourself walking towards the light. It's expensive, but... Cling to life and stare into the light. Perhaps you'll glimpse what lies beyond if your eyeballs stay intact. Silhouettes in the light. You force yourself to stare into the beyond. The beyond pours into you. In the light swallowed depths are gargantuan wheels, vast as oceans, turning with unstoppable momentum. Between them, glimpses of colossal things like limbs, performing ineffable tasks with flawless precision. Twisting rivers of sapphire light, streaks of language chasing each other up pillars of frozen lightning. Are those spirits you see rising like angels? Why are they writhing? Why are they being pulled apart? Is a brutal, swift, methodical disassembly. A meticulous unmaking. Finally, the light forces you to bury your head in your hands, bringing away furious tears. Oh. I made the right choice. Turn back. Oh, my, 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 my. A charnel house of the souls. Reclaim our face. You tramp through the mud until you find a bureaucratic outpost. Half car and half bunker. Give me back my face. Oh, you... Bastards! You took my face and my name! Oh my god. Okay, we don't usually get requests for returns. The jaded quartermaster is a shade with an almost spherical body and a mask whose lips are pursed in frozen contempt. His voice mutters from a clay urn on his desk. You have to stoop to hear him. The Blue Kingdom doesn't really do returns as a rule. Hmm. Huh. 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 I see. Well. This is upsetting. Leave for now. Actually, I'm wondering, can I do anything different here? Nope. Cool. Well then. I have a new quest. And unfortunately, a very terrible situation to try to do it all in. But hey. It's fine. We'll figure it out. I don't have the money for this. <sighs> okay. So. Learned a few things. Learned that death. Past death's door. Apparently. The suns are just disassembling souls. Ripping them apart. Um, presumably to. Make new things. To eat them. We don't know what exactly. Why exactly it's doing this. But it's disassembling souls. And it's apparently a very painful process given how they are writhing in pain. So, learned that. Don't like that I learned that. But, new insights gained, and technically, we've done our job and figured out, well, found the lost love of the industrialist. Unfortunately, I think she's going to disappear as soon as we get past the... Oh, yeah, she's definitely going to disappear if we try to leave... 
but also my money situation, but also all the situations I'm in. Oh, dearie dear me. Well, we have made choices, and we will deal with the consequences of them later. For now, thank you all for your time. Note the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below, use them responsibly, and I will see you all soon. Goodbye for now.